At this time of the year, we reflect on all that God has given to us in a sense of thanksgiving. And as a parish, we reflect on our role of stewardship. As we hear from Scripture, a steward is someone that's been entrusted with someone else's goods. And of course, that's how we look at our lives and indeed everything we possess as Christians, as a gift from God. And as we hear in Jesus' parables, we will be judged about how we have used those gifts, in which way we have proven ourselves to be good stewards. This morning I've asked Shelley and Corey Gavin to speak to us about how they are good stewards. Corey and Shelley. Good morning. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. As Father said, we are Shelley and Corey Gavin, and we are lifelong members of the Lancaster Catholic community. Our great-grandparents worshiped in these very pews, and hopefully, God willing, our great-grandchildren will as well. Corey and I met at St. Mary Junior High in the sixth grade. We are both proud graduates of Fisher Catholic High School, class of 1990. Much of our youth was spent in these very pews, celebrating the sacraments with each other, our classmates, and our families. On September 14, 1996, 25 years ago, Corey and I celebrated the sacrament of marriage on this very altar. We chose to say yes to each other and to God, and we have worked to continue saying yes to our Catholic faith and to our Catholic community. We are blessed with four beautiful children. Max is 23 and is working hard. Jack is 21 and he is a senior at Ohio University. Paige is 19 and is a freshman at Xavier University. And our youngest, Kate, is 17 and a senior at Fisher Catholic High School. They are all proud graduates of St. Mary Junior High and will soon be graduates of Fisher Catholic High School. And they are the most wonderful and interesting people we've ever met. Central and essential to our ability to raise our four children was our Catholic faith and this very faith community. Our schools and this church provided safe places to share and grow in our faith with teachers in the classroom, youth group leaders, our spiritual leaders, and each and every one of you. The strongest example of the power of our faith came in standing shoulder to shoulder in prayer with each of you every weekend. You helped set an important example for our family and indeed helped us raise our family. For that, we will be eternally grateful. It was only natural that Corey and I felt a sense of duty and urgency when it came to giving back to our wonderful Catholic community. Corey and I found that we reaped so many more benefits from the sharing of our time, talent, and treasure than we could ever bestow. Through the years, we have had the opportunity to say yes to serving as a Cub Scout leader, volunteering at the elementary school and as a teacher's aide, coaching our girls' bitty basketball and volleyball program, serving on the Lazarus Committee, participating as a member of the school board, serving as a lector. Our children were altar servers and in the children's choir. We've also been privileged to be asked by Father to serve on a few special church committees. All of these experiences have enriched our lives, created deeper connections to our faith, and allowed us the opportunity to be part of God's work here where we live. While we hope our actions have had an effect on others, 
we know for certain the positive impact they have had on our lives. Shelley and I have worked to be purposeful about the use of our time, talent, and treasure. We have had so many opportunities to say yes to this faith community. Historically focusing our time on activities connected to our children, but beginning to consider uses of that time as we quickly become, become empty nesters. We work to leverage our talent where we see a particular need. In addition, while we work hard for our own financial treasure, that hard work is all the more re rewarding when we can leverage that treasure to assist our community. My close friends in the congregation know I'm fond of saying, don't let your money tell you what to do, but instead tell your money what you want it to do. Shelly and I sit down every year and we plan for the upcoming year. We talk about what kind of vacation we'd like to have, what home improvement projects we need to put on the list, and what savings and financial planning goals we have for the year. As part of that conversation, we are very pur purposeful in allocating our time, talent, and treasure. We allocate specific portions of our income to support the church, the bishop's annual appeal, and any special offerings that arise. Most recently, we all had an opportunity to help with the capital campaign for the church renovations. There was no question that it was exactly the kind of project that allowed us to tell our money what we wanted it to do. And look what we were all able to do together. By saying yes with our time, talent, and treasure today, we can ensure that this building and this faith community has a chance to be here for our great-grandchildren. In conclusion, we ask all of you to think about what your yes will be. What can you say yes to today? What will you choose to do with your time, talent, and treasure to support our faith community and make sure we continue to send young people like our Max, Jack, Paige, and Kate into the world to shine their light? Thank you. Thank you, Corey and Shelley, very much. Sometime this week, you will receive from me a letter and a pledge card for this year's um, 2022 offertory program. Again, you're making a pledge for this coming calendar year. How much of your income you will pledge to the parish for the year 22. I want to thank you all who made a pledge last year at this time and are continuing to fulfill it. And also, those who are continuing to fulfill the pledge they made for our One Faith, One Hope, One Family capital campaign. When we began that campaign some three years ago, I acknowledged that it would be a stretch for many of us to both continue to support the church as it was to keep the train running as we did major renovation on it. And so many of you stepped up to that challenge, and because, as Corey said, we have this beautiful church to thank for it. And I thank you for meeting that challenge. When you receive my letter, please read it, reflect over it, think about what the Gavin spoke about this morning, and pray. Pray as to what your response to God's graciousness to you will be, how you are called to be a good steward. As Corey said so eloquently, make sure that you are telling your money what to do and not allowing it to tell you what to do. There's no greater way to do this or better way to do this than thinking about percentages. No two of us have the same level of income. And so if we choose to each give 5% of that income, then the burden rests equally on all of us. But it does take every one of us. To some degree or another, each one of us is called to support the good work that, that goes on here at St. Mary. Once you make that decision as to what your tithe will be for this coming year 
of 22, please fill out this pledge card. You then can return it by putting it into the collection basket next weekend, dropping it off at the rectory during office hours, or mailing it in. Also, if you're not already doing so, give some thought to making your weekly donation to St. Mary through um, direct bank bill pay. Call your bank, set it up. It costs you nothing and it costs us nothing. There's all kinds of programs out there, but when we have talked about that in finance committee, again and again, they've encouraged me not to do any program. Why? Because the cost simply is prohibitive. But by you doing it yourself, going to the bank and setting up this automatic withdrawal, you are assured that, again, you are telling your money what to do, and it's not telling you what to do. I thank you, again, for listening this morning, for reading my letter when it comes this week, and for your support, not only financially, but so many of you do give of your time and talent. And that's what makes this parish great, is the willingness to, as Shelley said, stand shoulder to shoulder in our worship of God and of our building up the kingdom here on earth.